Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Ami, your friendly rheumatologist, with another episode of On a Bridge MD, where we provide you hope driven by science. As always, if you are looking for rheumatologists in Denver or Colorado, we are currently open and accepting new patients. So come on in and contact us at info at onabridgemd.com. Today, I have the pleasure to have with us Dr. Fortun, who uh, is a PMNR specialist. So she works with chronic pain, and I think a lot of us can learn a lot of things from it. Dr. Ruth, I'm going to call you Dr. Ruth. Is that okay? That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Dr. Ruth, uh, please introduce yourself. Tell us why, uh, uh, where you are and why you chose PMNR, like rehab, to be a rehab specialist and especially in chronic pain. Okay, so um, so much. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, I'm really um, honored to be uh, with you and your audience. Um, so yes, I've been, wow, I've been in medicine. I guess I graduated medical school back in 90, 91. So I've been around a while. <laughs> um, I thought I, when I went into medical school, I thought I wanted to be a doctor from when I was nine. I thought I was going to be a pediatrician. because My mom happens to be one. She's the first doctor in our family. Um, and when I got to medical school on the peds rotation, it was not like outpatient. I found I did not like it. I did not like working with sick children. I love children, but I don't, I just, I, it was, it was hard on me. I didn't want to poke them. I didn't want to do, learn how to do a lumbar tap. I didn't want to do any of that to those little kids. So I said, well, what else can I, what else can I find? I did an elective at the National Rehab Hospital in DC and I loved it. I loved, I loved the fact that it was a multidisciplinary, it's, it's baked into rehab to be multidisciplinary. You're working with a physical occupational therapist, um, speech therapist, uh, you care about the whole person, not just about an organ system or a body part. You wanna know how they uh, were in their community, uh, you know, home or work or whatever, what they were doing and how to get them as independent as possible um, again. And it's very creative because, you know, not necessarily everything works for everyone. So I just, I just thought it was great. I still remember my first uh, patient as a, as a resident, just kind of, you know, monitoring. She was an amputee, below knee amputee. She was so, so devastated when she started and rehab. And then just a few weeks later, when she was able to walk with her prosthesis and how happy she was, it just, it made me happy. And I thought, yep, this is it. This is what I want to do. So um, as far as, as, as pain goes, it's funny. A lot of outpatient rehab is managing pain. Um, that's what what you, what you see. I do. I am a general uh, PMNR. I didn't. I didn't do an extra fellowship. I should have. I could have. I could have um, grandfathered in for pain management. I, I, little kids and everything. I wasn't. My mind wasn't there. But, um, yeah. I I noticed because I, I love people. I do. I noticed though that I would have this kind of resentment uh, when. The people with chronic pain came in. I'll just be honest. I and I, and I wasn't alone. I know a lot of doctors. They they first of all they assume chronic pain means they're coming for opioids, which is not necessarily what it means. But you know they don't want to be bothered. You know, but in in my case it wasn't that. I had to think what is going on with me, and I realized I like to see people get well. I like to see people get better and they're not getting better. <laughs> so, um, and, and just my own journey as well. Um, I, I met a, a, another PM&R. Turns out we both um, took our families across country to the Redwoods to camp. And I met her there. She lived in Brooklyn. I lived in Staten Island. <laughs> but um, she told me how she wasn't practicing traditional medicine anymore. You know, her whole practice had changed and it started with a food as medicine conference. Um, and then from there, she she's a functional medicine uh, practitioner. I went to the Food as Medicine conference. I was blown away as well. I just we weren't aren't taught that. I don't, I think medica medicine has changed some. Maybe they are teaching it more. But I know when I came along, we weren't talked about talked to about the importance of nutrition. It just wasn't part of our um, what we learned. And um, 
you know, we weren't taught. I mean, we know some now, but it seems like we're so uh, medication and procedure oriented because those are the things that insurance covers. Um, you know, there's so many other things that are, are helpful, preventative, and and I just don't feel they're emphasized enough. So anyway, as I as I learn more and I incorporated those things in my practice, I actually saw people getting better and people with chronic pain getting better. And, and that felt really good, you know, so that's it. <laughs> that's really wonderful. I absolutely love this. So the, the uh, podcast is really about hope driven by science. And, you know, there's such a power in stories. Could you tell us the stories of one of your patients that, where, where something happened and you're like, wow, this, this is what I want. I want to bring hope to patients with chronic pain. And you started like telling us about the first patient with uh, the amputation below the knee that had a lot of pain and then suddenly was super happy. Do you have mm -hmm. another uh, story like this where? Yeah, I guess I do. Um, they're, they're not long stories, but I do have some. Uh, there was a, a, a woman in a nursing home because that, uh, that's my, my day job. <laughs> Um, I go to nursing homes. She had spinal stenosis. She was on several medications, including opioids, um, chronically. Uh, she could not be operated on um, just because of all of her medical conditions. She was morbidly obese and other things. Um, and I, I tried different things. I, I tried gabapentin. No, nothing really took her pain fully away. And then I found that she smoked. I didn't know that she smoked. You know, and I was like, oh, my goodness, you know, you really you really should consider discontinuing. It took her a while. She didn't she didn't give them up right away. But um, I did come back. Uh, I, I guess I saw her probably a month later uh, and she had quit smoking and she had no more pain. And that was the first time she had no more pain and she didn't even need the narcotics anymore. And that was amazing to me. You know, it, it, the, uh, and it's not that I knew that that was gonna happen. <laughs> I'm just thinking in general, cigarettes are not, they're not good. The, the, the nicotine, the tobacco, all that junk that's in there that you're putting in your body. But yeah, it made a difference. It really made a difference for her. And that was, that was fun. Uh, another guy, um, he was a garbage collector and had very, very bad pain in his knees. Uh, he was also overweight um, and he was on a lot of oxycodone um, just for the audience. Uh, morphine, everything is compared to, to morphine. They call it morphine equivalents. And you don't want to be on over 90 milli equivalents of morphine in a day, like in a 24 hour period. The amount of oxy, because oxy is actually like twice the dose of morphine. Like you say, one morphine would be two oxy. It's the way it works. He was on well over 90 already because he was taking 40 in the morning, 20 in the afternoon, 40 at night. So, you know, that's like 90 right there, but that's actually like 180, you know, because it's it's double. So anyway, he was on a, he was on way too much. But I mean, he's a big guy, and I get it. He didn't he didn't fall out. He didn't get sick. He didn't die. But he was asking me the first time I saw him, Doc. I you know with my work because it's very heavy work that he does. Can you increase my dose? I said, Oh my gosh, you're on too much already. <laughs> I can't in increase it. And so I gave him a diet, anti-inflammatory diet. I told him, you know, you you need if you make these changes that's going to help decrease inflammation. You want to make your body as anti-inflammatory as possible. And I gave him some exercises as well. And yes, his pain got much better. I never was able, just to be honest, full disclosure, he didn't let me take him off of his, his, his narcotics. I really wanted to bring him down and, and, and we didn't get that far. But I worked with him for five months and his, his pain was much, much better with just, just a change in diet. This is amazing. I think this, like, you know, the first, the first uh, story that you just told us about the person quitting smoking. So number one, uh, in rheumatology, for example, 
if you smoke and you're taking hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil, which is you know the treatment that every single patient with lupus should have, um, we know that it doesn't work as much. Uh-huh. So patients, like one of the ways that uh, we can we can actually say, hey, the patient is a smoker, is if the plaquenil doesn't work, yes. then we are like, hey, do you smoke? And if they smoke, you're like, well, basically, you're not allowing plaquenil to work. Right. right. And so I, I wonder if that's one of the things that happened. The other thing is, you're absolutely, we see that all of the time smoking is pro-inflammatory. It causes rheumatoid arthritis. It causes like cervical arthritis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it causes flares. So what, what really struck me in the story that you just mentioned, those two, the first one particularly with the, the smoker is that she chose her. She one day decided, I'm going to choose me. Mm-hmm. And that is really what you were able to give her, which is like, hey, I'm here, I'm helping you, but like, how about you chose you? Uh, so that really strikes me. I thought that that was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And this other patient, I'm blown away because uh, I use anti-inflammatory diet. I, I call it the Mediterranean diet. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually love that. Uh, but we use that in rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and all of those inflammatory, you know, pro-inflammatory disorder. I would not have thought that just for chronic pain, it would work. And then, you know, you start thinking like, how does this work? Mm-hmm. Um, does, is the pain pro, like, is the pain inflammatory always? Well, um, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. But you know that, um, they are saying that all of our chronic illnesses, things like, uh, well, cancer is not necessarily yeah. chronic illness, but it cancer, is, but it's diabetes, yeah. heart disease, chronic pain are all based in inflammation. Yeah. So if we can, you know, just have a, a better diet and, and also stress management because stress is yeah. inflammatory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. People don't realize when they get stressed out over whatever's going on and then their pain gets really really worse yeah well yeah the 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 stress contributed to that it's very connected so it's important not to uh, it's important to learn how to manage that and how to not get stressed i learned how to relax how to get your body to relax um you know there's there's so many things and 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 sugar is very inflammatory and it's funny when my kids were growing up i wouldn't buy sodas on a regular basis but i bought all this juice not recognizing oh my gosh the juice is full of sugar <laughs> it wasn't doing any better <laughs> so, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good point well wow, this has been so good um where can our auditors find you? Where where can they find you in person if they want to work with you or if there's anything else that you propose that if yeah, so they I'm, want to learn more? Sure. So my practice is solely a on um, online practice, a telehealth practice, um, chronicpainrescue.com. Um, if for people outside of California, I can be a coach. Um I also practice homeopathy. I did um, I learned homeopathy, which is a whole different approach uh, than, than the medicine, basically um, allopathic medicine, which is what our traditional medicine practices, it's always anti. So it's anti-diabetic, anti-hypertensive, anti-inflammatory. With the, the idea be- behind homeopathy is is like treats like so they actually take something that causes the symptoms that you have they dilute it very much dilute it and then give that to you and it's basically to help your body mount a response you can think of it like a vaccine because that's mm-hmm. what a vaccine does your own body mounts a response and i found some you know, really good results with it. I know of a, of a doctor actually who's got rheumatoid arthritis. You would think looking at her hands, you would think she's in a lot of pain. She's not in any pain and all she takes is her homeopathy bed. So, um, so anyway, um, yeah, they can find me at chronicpainrescue.com. Um, it, it is, uh, if, if they live in California, cause I'm in Long Beach, California, I, I am licensed as a, as a medical doctor. So I can practice, um, medicine a little more with, with, uh, people in, uh, that are based in California, but, uh, that's it. I, I, I do, uh, in addition to seeing me as a pay, as a client, um, I'm willing to meet with someone online, like a, like a phone free phone consultation if they'd like to see if they want to work with me. So oh, that's wonderful. That's excellent. So we, we'll put out of this in the notes uh, on the podcast. Well, 
uh, Dr. Roof, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you again very soon and talk and go in deep dive in specific conditions, maybe in the future. Uh, and for the auditors, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening and uh, uh, being, um, you know, and sharing the podcast with other people. If you have enjoyed the podcast, don't hesitate to share it with uh, one of your friends or family members. And again, this is uh, the podcast on abridgemd.com. And you can uh, come if you are in need of a rheumatologist. Have a wonderful day, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.